evening. Planning and Zoning Commission meeting Wednesday, December 4th, 2019. It's called to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the secretary please note the roll? Commissioner Ellison is present. Commissioner Kish is present. Commissioner Maloney is present. Commissioner Steiner is present. Commissioner Clymer is present. Vice Chairman Barnes is present. Chairman Bray is absent. We have a quorum. Thank you. At this time, we'll take a vote to excuse our chairman. Mr. Bray, um, can I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, excuse Chairman Bray. Second. Second has been properly moved and seconded. Can I, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Very good. Uh, we will proceed to item one, which is to approve the draft minutes of last month's Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Um, do I have a motion for discussion? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, have, I move have, that we have you read them since you weren't here? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve last month's minutes. I second. Uh, it's been properly moved and seconded. Can we uh, take a vote? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Now is the time for citizens who would like to address the Planning and Zoning Commission on any non-agenda items. Do we have any speaker cards? We never have any speaker cards. Sometime, I'm going to pay somebody to come in here just once before my last term is up. Um, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak? No. Very good. Um, I will move on to disclosure of ex parte communications. This is an opportunity for any commission members to disclose any outside communications they may have had before this meeting. Anyone? Nope. Anyone have any discussions? No. Very good. Um, there are no public hearings, so we will move on to item number two, uh, the preliminary plat, plat for the Goodyear Civic Square Parcel B, and Steve will present. Good evening, Mr. Chair, Commission members. Tonight's item is a preliminary plat, Goodyear Civic Square, and that's Parcel B. And this is the overall Civic Square PAD uh, zoning approved in 2019. Tonight is here, parcel B, about that 42 acres that we're going to look at tonight. Uh, surrounding the property, we've got Bullard Wash all along here, along the west side. A lot of commercial uses, apartment, multifamily complex right here. Here's the future regional center here. In parcel C, we've got some proposed mix of uses, multifamily here. Parcel A, again, another mix of use here. Uh, Civic Square is in the middle here. We'll have the City Hall complex, the park. And then to the north, we have a lot of existing residential development. Again, PAD was adopted just recently, 2019, parcel B designated for residential use and on that parcel B we have a variety of lot sizes development types that are permitted and again this is the Civic Square PAD we're parcel B here and this just shows you some of the kind of the layout here for the Civic Center and how it'll all integrate with parcel B parcel C and the residential here hopefully will be coming down here using some of the commercial type uses, entertainment type uses proposed here. And the tent tonight, we have a plat to subdivide the property. Again, it's about a little over 42 acres, 290 lots are proposed on a total. And we have the three different lot types. We have the conventional single family, and that's about 100 lots, court home product. 70 lots, and then we'll have townhomes, 120 lots. And this is a drawing from the landscape exhibit, conceptual landscape plan. This one shows a good 
provides the color, which kind of lets you differentiate. This is the conventional single family in this northern part here. And again, that's about 100 lots. And then here as you transition to the south, you start the court home lots. And then here along Monta Vista, we have the townhomes. All the streets within the subdivision are public, so built to city standard. These are shared driveways. These are the only private streets within the development. So all of these are basically just shared driveways for the townhomes, and then these are the shared driveways for the court homes. Uh, the court homes, the developer is calling them a green court because they will face onto greens in the middle here. So you have garages in the back, fronts here on the greens, such as these lots here fronting onto greens. The townhomes also will front onto the streets with common access for vehicles in the back. This is the conventional single family detached. Uh, parking is handled within garages and on driveways, also on the street. Uh, again, these are public streets, so we do allow on-street parking. There'll be no parking allowed within any of the private drives. Guest parking, as you can see here, some of the townhomes will have driveways capable of providing guest parking for a couple cars. They'll also be parking along the street. And then you'll see guest parking spots dispersed throughout the community. Open space. Right here is a main area, got about seven acres of open space. There'll be a pool area here, a lot of active amenities provided in this main green space here. We have Bullard Wash just to the west and are providing a couple connections so residents here can easily access the wash and all the amenities in the wash. Uh, SAF has reviewed the preliminary plat. We do find it consistent with the Civic Square PAD. We do find it consistent with our subdivision regulations. Uh, as such, we are recommending approvals subject to the six stipulations in the staff report. Uh, Mr. Chair, that concludes my presentation. Uh, staff's available for questions. Applicants also here if you have any questions. Thank you very much. We do have questions for staff. I have a question. Um, could you go over this, the parking again? It, se it seems a little tight. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commission members, we do have a, uh, it's public street, so you do have parking, on-street parking that's permitted on a public street. And this is just your standard conventional neighborhood detached single family product. Uh, we've all seen that. Guests can park on a the street. They'll have driveways, probably park a couple cars there. The court homes, There'll be no parking in the driveway, in the private drives. So you'll have to park on the street or in some of these guest parking spaces. Uh, same thing for the court homes. Court homes, though, will have an added benefit of a lot of them have these driveways. Pretty much majority have driveways that you can fit a couple cars as well as garages. All of them will have garages, so the homeowner will have a spot for their cars. So guests can park either in the driveways or on the streets. We did review it for the parking in terms of meeting the city's guest parking requirements, and it does meet that. I see that uh, pool, then it's, that's an amenity for the whole project? Was... Yes, sir. Yeah. Are there any more questions for Steve? Thank you very much. Are there any speaker's cards on this item? Or is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on this item? Um, does the uh, applicant wish to speak? Yes. I'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Chairman. Commissioners, my name is Brian Greathouse. My uh, address is 702 East Osborne Road, representing BB Living, who's the proposed developer of this. Also with me are Brandon Lombardi from BB Living and uh, our engineers are here as well. No presentation per se, just wanted to say that we're here to answer any additional questions you have. We agree with staff's findings. Um, BB's okay with the stipulations one through six and we'd appreciate your 
recommendation of approval here tonight. And we are consistent with the presentation we gave this commission on this PAD for Goodyear Civic Square earlier this year. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the applicant? I got one. One question. Um, okay. This one. Um, Steve mentioned going uh, out to Bullard Wash, and I know when we approved the Compass data centers, they were to build the trail along their boundary for Bullard Wash. Does that also include the developer here, or is there city putting in the trail, or is there a trail going to be to connect all the way up and down Bullard Wash? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, Commission members, they will have connections, but I believe the question is then connecting from there to the actual tr existing. It, I, I don't know. I've been there. Is there is there is there a trail now that has uh, been built? I know it. it could. Ye yes, sir. There is existing improvements in the wash. We would just need to bridge those. All right. I didn't, yeah, I haven't been there, so I'd like to get out. Run down there on my bike sometimes. Okay. I've been down there many times. It's a nice sidewalk. Once the uh, new city hall goes in, it'll, it'll be, be very good. good. Yeah. Two playgrounds. It's a good place. Amphitheater. Any uh, further questions for the applicant? I do. I'm sorry to keep harping on this parking. Um, you know, with this with this housing coming in and then the city hall development south of that, I'm concerned about the parking like on Monte Vista or maybe up on Encanto. I mean, it seems like we're, we're, I understand that there must be studies done about how much parking can be done, but is there gonna be a problem with this new city hall area down here overflowing up into these neighborhoods or vice versa so parking if i can interject one second if i can i think which the mr chairman yes please um and not to interrupt mr greathouse or his applicant or his owner rather um but what you're referring to commissioner maloney is parcel a south of money vista which is where city hall is yes um that is not the parcel that they're concerned no over i here. understand that so uh, what i can I can tell you that on parcel A, we are actively working with the design build team. And as of earlier this afternoon, the parking ratio is 5.2 per thousand, which meets our requirements. So we're gonna end up okay there. And the reason is, although the city is a um, customer and ultimately an owner within the Civic Square project of a roughly 125,000 square foot class A type office building with the 20,000 square foot library included in it along with the park and so forth. The balance, if you think about that, that southern par property is, what is it Steve, of roughly 40 acres-ish. Um, the developer, who Globe, who owns the property now and is the developer of the, of parcel, the remainder of parcel A, um, they have to meet the city's parking requirements as they move forward. So each one of those projects as they move forward has to meet the requirements. Okay. So we're not expecting there to be any type of parking issue on parcel A at all. Um, as a matter of fact, there's parcel A, there's two proposed parking garages in order to ensure that the two privately owned Globe Corporation Class A office buildings have the desirable parking that a Class A tenant, office tenant wants to have. So I think we're going to be okay with that. Now, there will be some on-street parking um, that makes the pedestrian experience that much, much more pleasant. Um, and so there is on-street parking, there, and there are some surface parking lots in Parcel A, and there is some structured, there is structured parking as well. Okay. So I didn't mean to interrupt because what she was asking on Parcel A, not Parcel B. Thank you, Christopher. I was going to say the same exact thing. Parcel A will be planned for to, to be parked and consistent with the PAD. Um, the PAD says that parcel B has to be parked in accordance with the city requirements. There's no uh, deviations or reductions allowed, so it's parked per the, per the ordinance requirements. 
and then the PAD has certain parking requirements for parcel C. So it's outlined in the overall PAD for the area of how these things are going to be planned and parked. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions for the applicant? No, very good. Thank you very much. Do we have any speaker cards? Oh, I already went through that. We have no speakers. Very good. Is there any discussion among the commission on this item? Any further comments? Very well. I will, Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I um, say that we approve number 19-500-00013. Second. It has been properly moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. And now my favorite part of being a planning commissioner, staff communications, when Chris tells us all the interesting things that happened while we were away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commission. Um, so just to kind of bring you up to date, if you remember, we met in um, November prior to Thanksgiving. It's hard to believe we say that, right? Um, the pre all of these items cascaded to the city council for consideration on November 18th. There was the preliminary plat for Australia in 12.36, which is uh, down uh, a little bit north of where the high school is on the, I'm going to say, the east side of Australia Parkway. Um, so that was approved by council. Council likewise also approved the rezoning for fire station 181, I believe it is, right over here, um, to a public facilities district. And that project's moving along. Uh, it's in site planning process right now. That was it. There was those two items. And so thank you for your service this year. I can't believe we have to talk about the year. But you know what, Katie, we should probably do? <laughs> we should do like a year-end recap. Yeah. To, maybe we'll, we'll do that at the um, do what, a top, like a 10? top 10. A top like 10 list. Zoning, like yeah, that's events. right. <laughs> we could do it because, you know, we, we meet once a once a month. And we cover a lot of business, and we kind of eat it up, eat the elephant one bite at a time, if you will, and then we kind of forget what we did back in January. So maybe this January we can do a brief five- or ten-minute presentation on just the scale of the projects and everything that you considered in 2000 calendar year 2019, if you're so inclined. Sounds great. You could, you could present it at the December 11th Planning Commission meeting. No, everybody's looking at me like deer in headlights. There is no December like, 11th. What? That was just what? a bit of levity. <laughs> Good one. Um, Good one. And so um, on that note, we certainly wish you all a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, however you and your family choose to celebrate. If you go out of town, hopefully you have wonderful family, friends, time, safe travels, and um, we look forward to seeing you in 2020. Wow. Thank you. It's hard, hard, to, hard to say that, but. Not, not that we're not happy to see you. It's hard to say 20, 2020, I should say. The next Planning and Zoning Commission meeting will be held January 15th, 2020 at 6 p.m. in this same location. There being no further business, this meeting is adjourned.